Uh, welcome. Good morning, Christ City Church. Good morning. Good, good to good to see you. Good, glad that you're here. For those of you uh, joining online, uh, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. If you're watching, Happy Mother's Day. If you're not, bro, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Good morning. My name is uh, Matthew Watson. I serve as one of the pastors here at Christ City and just really honored uh, to worship with you this morning and to remember God's promises to all of us. Um, I want to tell a little bit of a story, uh, but before I get there, several months ago, um, welcome. This is your first time here. going to give you a little bit of background of who Christ City is and uh, maybe set the table a little bit. Several months ago, Christ City Church, we celebrated five years as Christ City Church. Um, it was uh, in the back half of 2017 that Christ City installed its own elder board, signifying its particularization. It's a big $5 word in church speak. It simply means that a church plant has become an independent church. And in our case, it meant that we were no longer a part of the church that had planted us, the district church. And we became an autonomous church being led by elders from within our congregation. And we renamed Christ City Church. There's so many ways that that God moved in that season leading up to our becoming of Christ City. So many people, so many providences, so many circumstances and coincidences and just miracles, frankly. Christ City's story uh, began, it actually began almost a decade ago in a row house on Bay Street, just a few blocks from where you're sitting. Nate and Sarah Schultz, along with Annabelle and Isabel, their twin daughters were there, and they hosted those earliest of meetings. Months later, Pastor Justin would lead those first members to begin worshiping here at Minor. Lisa nor I were here then. Neither was Nikki. Jocelyn just joined us last week. Last week, last year, <laughs> she wasn't here either. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, Drea was, though. She and Drew were here because they were looking for a church, and apparently Drea saw something about a church launching on Twitter the day before. This was like back when Twitter was young and fun, before it got old and grumpy and weird. <laughs> One of the consistent marks that has held what's become Christ City Church is an ache to see our neighbors invited into a faith that is on the one hand personal, a faith that speaks to the deeper pains and virtues of one's life, and a faith on the other hand that speaks to the hurts and hopes facing our city. In the early years of Christ City, and throughout Christ City's life, the, the consistent North Star, the, the, the guiding star for us has been a faith rooted in Jesus, a faith that's both personal and public, an expression of God's just and liberating kingdom. The way we've articulated this most often, and by most often I mean on our website, um, is on the vision section where we've articulated it this way. I've seen God's kingdom on display in every life and every sphere of life in D.C. and beyond. Every life and every sphere of life, we want to see God's kingdom. In every life, the, these personal aspects of faith, this is why baptism and discipleship and spiritual formation and godly counsel and counseling are all important to what we've done. We want to see people invited into the life that is found in Jesus, and we want for ourselves an ever-deepening experience of God's healing and God's leading in our lives. In every sphere of life, these public aspects of our faith, individually and collectively, just as Jesus comes into our lives to remind us of our image-bearing qualities and introduces us to ways of living that lead to life and lead us out of brokenness, so too does Jesus invite us to join the Spirit in God's work of dismantling systems and structures and patterns of living that lead to brokenness, that strip dignity and deny the flourishing that God intended. But ours isn't only the work of dismantling, but also of creating, of creating systems and structures that provide better echoes of God's kingdom where everyone has what they need, where dignity is acknowledged, where relationships are restored and flourishing is commonplace and peace and, and shalom is the order of the day. From Christ City's earliest days, a, a public faith that addresses justice has been a hallmark of this church. And the reason for this is both biblical and missional. Biblically, justice is a consistent theme throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Bible, God continually calls the people of God to be marked by justice, by care and compassion for the poor and for the marginalized. God wants the people of God to display 
display God's care for those that experience oppression and that are taken advantage of by the rich and by the powerful. In the early books of the Old Testament, following the Exodus, God impresses upon the Jews that they are to learn to do good, to seek justice, to correct oppression, to bring justice to the fatherless and please the widow's cause. This is what we hear from Isaiah in chapter 1. The, the reason for this is because God, the people of God were always intended to display the character of God, which is described in Deuteronomy, for example, the rock speaking about God. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is He. As among other things, God is among other things, He's faithful, He's without iniquity, meaning without immorality or unfairness, but most of all that God is just. Even the psalmists, when describing God's kingdom, they celebrate this just nature of God. In Psalm 89, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness, they go before you. When Jesus in the New Testament, when he begins his public ministry, the gospel writers note that in his first sermon, Jesus invokes the prophetic and justice-oriented words of the prophet Isaiah, proclaiming in Luke 4, the, sc- the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. And the gospel writer goes on to say, Then he, Jesus, rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on Jesus. Jesus began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is saying that good news, that liberation, that healing, and the end of oppression, that all of it finds its fullest expression in him. Jesus is justice embodied. Christ City has and will continue to press into what it means to be a people marked by God's justice because God's word beckons us into that life and work. Justice is a mark of God's character and must be a mark of God's people. It must be a a mark and part of the mission of God's people. Missionally, Missionally, I mean as those who follow Jesus as those sent ones, as those bearing witness to God's kingdom. Missionally, justice is crucial to our discipleship and our witness in D.C. and throughout the DMV. Goodness, across America for that matter. Because so much of the story of North America is a story of injustice and oppression. Much of it done in the name of Jesus with the blessing of churches. One of the ways that we bear faithful witness to the beauty of God's kingdom is through the work of justice. As professor and author Dr. Cornell West says, just as tenderness is what love feels like in private, justice is what love looks like in public. Saints, our work of justice becomes an apologetic for the gospel in the public sphere. When we advocate for the end to oppressive systems and structures, what we are engaging in is uh, proclaiming good news that tells the world that a day is soon coming when Jesus will set right all that is broken and make right all that has been taken by the enemy. In any place where we encounter the systems of injustice, that seek to mar the image of God and God's people, and any system or structure that seeks to communicate to people that they matter less or that they worth less, then our work as those that follow Jesus must be aimed at dismantling those systems because Jesus died on the cross to communicate to everybody that they are somebody in God's eyes. Our faith compels us to ensure that children can read at grade level because Jesus says that he values the littlest among us. Our faith compels us to care for immigrants regardless of how they arrived in our national neighborhood because we remember that our Lord was also a refugee who fled his country because of violence. Our faith compels us to welcome home returning citizens even as we remember that Jesus identified with the incarcerated and was killed by state execution. Our faith compels us to advocate for and seek solutions for affordable housing and care for our unhoused neighbors in anticipation of the day when we arrive in that home that Jesus said he's preparing for all of us. Saints, our faith compels us to pursue justice. Our world needs for us to work for the things that make for a more just world. And saints, our Lord demands it. 
This is why justice has been an aspect of faith and discipleship that Christ's city has consistently returned to over and over. In the passage that we read, Psalm 85, the psalmist paints a beautiful portrait. I could have picked any of the psalms or passages from Isaiah or Jeremiah or the Gospels. But the psalmist here paints a beautiful portrait of God's just kingdom. It bears reading again, love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace, they kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give us what is good. And our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Verse 10 begins with this image of intimacy and meeting. God's love and God's faithfulness joining. And then we get this phrase, righteousness and peace, they kiss. The word for righteousness in Hebrew is sadak. Say that with me, sadak. Well done, not bad. Happy Mother's Day. Sadak means righteous and just together in Hebrew. In English, righteous or righteousness, it's, it's sort of taken a more singular meaning that's closer to something like personal piety or holiness. And while that's a part of the original meaning, it's, it's very incomplete. The Hebrew understanding of sadak, it includes a sense of rightness and justness. It's righteousness and justice together. Justice and peace. They kiss. They're intimate. They're close. Verse 11, faithfulness springs forth from the earth while Sadak, justice, looks down from God's kingdom. The psalmist wants us to see this holistic, whole life, whole world enveloping of God's kingdom above and below, top, down, and bottom up. Concluding in verse 13, it's Sadak, it's justice that goes before God's kingdom, preparing the way for God's full and final arrival. As Old Testament professor Diane Jacobson knows, these are the hallmarks of God's kingdom. Steadfast love, faithfulness, peace, and justice, Sadak. You see, because of God's word and God's character and God's kingdom, and because of our context here in the nation's capital, justice has been and must be a constant in the life and ministry of Christ City Church. The sermon series that we're in, the next five, it's the culmination of a long season of prayer and research and discernment. We've been going through a strategic planning process. I think it began in the 70s. Feels like it's been going a long time, I'm not gonna lie to you. It comes at the end of a long and thoughtful strategic planning process, a process that has involved dozens of leaders, ministry leaders, small group leaders, elders, staff, others. And at the end of this process, we've arrived at three strategic priorities that will guide our ministry moving forward. Strategic priorities that we believe will shape the next five years of Christ City. We've already explored two of them in previous weeks, but the three priorities in total are transformational discipleship, inclusive welcome, and collaborative justice. If you can't tell, I'm speaking on the third one. In many ways, our strategic planning process, it has been less about uncovering something that's new, a new direction, a new work. It has been more about securing language that clarified a direction that we have long been headed in. Church, as we move into the season ahead, Christ City will continue to engage in works of Christ-honoring, city-flourishing justice. And we want to do this in ways that reflect our faith and that reflect God's kingdom. But we also want to engage in works of justice that aim to, to reweave the, the network of relationships across the city and across the greater DMV region and beyond. We don't want to just do this on our own. We want to work alongside existing ministries and agencies that are doing the faithful work of justice. Sometimes when churches or ministries, when they sort of get to this point, you know, we're on a sort of a strategic plan series, I'm going to ask you for money here in a minute, get ready. Like when we get to this point, oftentimes churches or ministries, they, they announce the start of a new ministry or a new initiative. It's not what I'm going to be doing today. And it doesn't mean that we won't ever begin a new work. 
You've heard this morning about the Angel Scroggins Memorial Fund. That's now in its second year. An initiative that Christ City started just over a year ago. And as the Spirit leads in the season ahead, there may be other new works that Christ City is called to lead out in. Initially or solely. But that's not going to be our regular first step. Rather, what we want to do is honor the ways that God has gone before us and is moving around us. We want to recognize that God's invitation may be for us to join works that are taking place outside of Christ City as a way to work towards a more just world. We're not the only ones working in this city. It has been this collective impulse that has led us over the years to partner with Minor Mutual Aid, with the Minor PTO, with Serve Your City, with the Ward 6 Mutual Aid, with the DC Unity and Justice Fellowship, and with the Washington Interfaith Network, with Kindred, with DC Public Schools Parent Advisory Board, with the Mayor's Interfaith Council, and the Department of Religious Affairs, with Paz Esperanza, and World Relief, and Missio Alliance, and CCDA, and a whole host of other organizations over the years. And in each instance, our partnership and collaboration was a response to an injustice in our city and in our world. Whether it be education, equity, economic injustice, affordable housing, the creation of black wealth through home ownership, religious freedom, peacemaking, anti-human trafficking, accessibility for the disabled community and refugee care, just to name a few of the areas of justice we sought to address and those that we sought to partner with in order to represent the glorious kingdom of God to an unbelieving world. Christ City can't do everything. Not going to do everything. We're not equipped to, nor are we called to address every injustice. We do have limitations of capacity, limitations of resources, and limitations of calling, frankly. But we can do a great many things. With a good number of other believers and people of goodwill, in order to create a more just city and a more just world that points to God's just kingdom. That's going to take some doing from us, from you, from me, y'all online. (laughs) It's going to take our prayers. It's going to take our presence. If we're going to be a people that, as Pastor Dele Okwobi commends, that pursue righteousness, and do justice. We need to be a people that prays and worships the God of all. Remaining rooted in Christ will sustain us for the journey of justice that we will take in the days ahead. And we'll need to be present, present in our communities, from H Street to Hyattsville, from Trinidad to Alexandria, from Capitol Hill to Silver Spring, and from Fairlawn to Fairfax. I'm just kidding. Fairfax, you on your own. That's too far from here. <laughs> Long ways. Couldn't think of another F one, so I just want Fairfax. We, uh, we got to be present. We cannot engage in disembodied works of justice. We must be rooted in the lives of those that are experiencing injustice in our communities. We must be present in the places where our prayers and our protests and our displays of God's loving kingdom are needed. The work ahead will require our prayers and our presence. And it will require funding. Much of our work, for example, around affordable housing over the past few years with the Washington Interfaith Network, it took place during the height of the pandemic. As the city began the redevelopment process for the land that's around Stadium Armory Metro, just a few blocks from here, it's a parcel of land called Reservation 13, and it's the site of the old D.C. Gen Family Homeless Shelter. As that work began, Christ City, along with uh, Wynn and a dozen of other Wynn churches, we began advocating for significant units of affordable housing to be included in the designs for redevelopment. That meant that we as a church, we were able, uh, congregationally, we were able to provide funding to win, which allowed us to mobilize across nearly 50 churches. We pushed for meetings with city officials, pushed for meetings with developers who submitted proposals. We held rallies and public events that many of you attended. Many of them were online and virtual. We attended those things in order to put political pressure on our mayor, on our deputy mayor, and on private developers. 
We're demanding that the space be that space be made for those that were being ground down by the ruthless economic forces in our city. And we did this because in God's kingdom, people have a quality place to live. And those efforts paid off. Our demands made it into the RFP. And they made it into every single proposal that the developers put forward into the city's plans. Including the one that was selected. The ones that were selected. But there's still work to do. Still work to do to ensure that affordable housing make it, makes its way off of the blueprints and off of the paper and actually into the space. But that's what's been done so far. The successes that we achieved have been accomplished. They've been accomplished because we prayed, because we showed up, because we were present, and because we were able also to provide funding that helped make it happen. And this all took place during the pandemic, when giving was down, and we weren't able to meet in person. But we had the funding because Christ City, Christ City had the funds because Christ City Saints gave during the first five years of our life as a church. Because of their generosity, ministry was able to continue to move forward, even in lean seasons. And I say this just as an example. As we look to the next five, church, let us continue building on what God has done in our midst. Let us further by faith what the Spirit has been stirring in us. A faith that display that is displayed in acts of faithful justice, justice that goes before the Lord and prepares the way for God's steps. Justice in whose embrace is peace. That's what we're going to be about in the next five. That's what we're asking you to join, to pray about, to give to, and to show up in. For the sake of God's kingdom, and for the sake of DC. In the world. Let me pray for us.